Over 200 million listeners to today's game. This game is about ready to start, and it'll give me a great deal of pleasure to turn this over to a fellow that's a really a pro behind this mic. He's been doing the games for the St. Louis Cardinals since 1946, and I always enjoy listening to him. I get him quite a bit at my home in Louisville, Kentucky. None other than Harry Carey. Come on in, Harry. Thank you very much, Pee Wee. All set to play baseball here. You know, it's a uh, strange thing. The outstanding uh, ball player on the 46 Red Sox was Ted Williams, the left fielder, this year in 67 as their left fielder, Carl Yastrzemski. In 46, the outstanding Cardinal was their first baseman, Stan Musial, and so it is this year, uh, Orlando Cepeda at first base. Let's pause here, 10 seconds now, for station identification. Saratoga, the authentic Bishy behind the yellow label. The only mixer we know of that people built a city just to be near. Bill Edwardson here twice a day, 7 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon. Here on WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. The Red Sox, need I tell you, have just taken the field. Dalton Jones at third base, Rico Petroselli at shortstop, Jerry Adair at second base, George Scott at first base, rolling the practice ball around. Jose Santiago kicking at the rubber as he gets ready to make his first practice pitch to Russ Gibson behind the plate. In left field is Carl Yastrzemski. In center field is Reggie Smith. And in right field is Ken Harrelson. You know, a year ago they said that Jerry Adair talked his way out of a share of the World Series. Remember then, he was with the Baltimore Orioles. He said to them, in effect, either play me or trade me. They traded him. Baltimore went on and won the American League pennant, won the World Series. Adair was not there to get any share of it. But this year, he winds up with the team that is in the World Series, playing second base for the Boston Red Sox. Lou Brock ready to lead off. A first ball hitter. He stole 52 bases uh, during the season. You know, every uh, every one of the nine St. Louis starters has had World Series experience. None of the nine Red Sox starters today have ever figured in a World Series. So let's see if experience really makes any difference in a short series. It'll be Brock, Flood, and Maris coming up in the first inning for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals won their pennant handily by ten and a half games over the second place Giants. The Red Sox are one of the most memorable, most dramatic finishes in any league's history, and certainly the American League's. Won on the final day by one game over the Detroit Tigers. The 1967 World Series is about to start. Lou Brock has stepped into the batter's box. The commissioner of baseball, William Eckert, has already thrown out the first ball. They're playing Brock, I notice, Yastrzemski far over towards center field. They give him the left field corner. I imagine with that short left field fence, they'll play practically all hitters that way. Jose Santiago from Puerto Rico into the windup. The World Series is underway. The first pitch slump. And he missed the curveball, strike one. So Lou Brock, a first ball hitter, did go after the first pitch. A breaking ball, and he swung and he missed. And so it's one strike, no ball. Santiago's pitch. It's a fastball high and outside. John Stevens of the American League behind the plate. The count evens up. One ball, one strike. Bright sunshine at Fenway Park. The sky, a blanket of azure blue. Fleeced here and there with little white clouds. The wind-up, the pitch to Brock. A looper in the left field. It's a base hit, the first hit of the series. Lou Brock loops one in the short left field. And Lou made up his mind to go the opposite way and succeeded against Jose Santiago. So Lou Brock is on. And here's Kurt Flood. Pee Wee, this fella. Loves to hit the ball to the opposite field, and he, like you did, had to work hard at mastering that neck. Well, I'm anxious to see uh, Brock, Lou Brock at first base. They say he likes to go, and he'll run right away. So let's, better watch him. Let's see if he will. The stretch. There he goes. Very first pitch. There's the throw. He is. Save. He stole it. And boy, I'll say this. This Gibson got the ball away in a hurry, and his throw was there, but Lou Brock just simply outran it. And Lou Brock, a 
has started the ball game in typical Cardinal fashion. He singles to left field, and on the first pitch, he steals second. This will give you a little bit of an idea about the abandon with which the Cardinals play baseball. There might be pressure in the World Series, but you wouldn't know it. They, uh, this is the way Brock played all day long. In the very first pitch, usually he'd go and he did again. Here's Flood now, a man on second base and nobody on. Flood who likes to hit the ball to the opposite field. The stretch by Santiago. The count is ball one, the pitch. He did try to hit the right field, and he sliced the foul back to the screen, and it evens it up in a ball and a strike. The sun is so bright that it's difficult to determine the ball and strike count on the board because the lights actually don't show as a result of the bright sunshine. One ball, one strike. Fenway Park, a mass of humanity. Whatever you can possibly jam into a ballpark this size, they've got here. One ball, one strike, Kurt Flood, the hitter. Brock, who very rarely tries to steal third, by the way. The stretch, the pitch to Flood by Santiago. Here it is. He was going to bunt it to hit the bat. It did. He meant to uh, hold up. The pitch was high, a bad ball. And he tried to pull back, but it hit the bat for a strike two on a foul tip that he did not mean to do. Two strikes on the ball. Flood on the hole. Roger Myers will be next. With Brock at second base, barring a line drive double play, it means that Flood, Maris, and Cepeda will have a shot at driving in the run. Kurt Flood straddles a plate. He hit 335 at a banner year. Five homers and 50 RBI. Here's the stretch. The pitch to the right-handed batter. And there's a dare going behind the bag, the pitch. Curveball. Straight three call. There is a big out. Flood unable to advance. Brock was fooled on a curveball. And there's one away. Here's Roger Maris, no stranger to Fenway Park. Veteran of some years of the American League. Nine homers during the regular season. 55 runs batted in. He hit 261. His average is not indicative of his worth. He was one of the key members of the Cardinals. Many a game-winning hit, especially early in the season when the pennant was in contention. So, Brock at second base with one out to stretch by Santiago. From the belt, the pitch. Maris takes a fastball high. One ball, no strikes. Flood, who is usually very, very successful at advancing a man, failed against Santiago here in the first inning on a good, sharp-breaking curveball that fooled him. One ball, no strikes. Roger Maris waits. They play him straight away and deep. He always loved to hit in this ballpark as a Yankee. Now the pitch. And here it is. Curveball. Up the corner, up the belt. And Santiago's curve is not a big one. It's quick. And he's been able to hit that corner so far. One ball, one strike. Runner in scoring position. Top of the first, no score. The first game of the World Series from Fenway Park, Boston. On a beautiful afternoon. Now the signal. Santiago glances at second. Petroselli holds Brock close. And the pitch to Maris. Fastball outside, ball two. When Brock is on base, it isn't only what he does so far as running. It's the distraction that he affords to the pitcher and what he does to the infield. For example, Petroselli and Adair have been taking turns. Actually, they've been out of position as a result. And that's what a fellow like Brock can do to you by getting on base. Now the pitch to Roger Matz. Two balls and a strike. The glance at second, Petroselli holding him close, and Santiago steps back off the rubber. The breeze, the wind is not any factor today. Here's the stretch. The pitch, and he takes outside and high. And the count ball three. Three balls and a strike. Brock faked as if to make a delayed attempt to steal, and Gibson was ready to fire. Gibson, the catcher of the Red Sox. Three balls and a strike. Joe Schultz coaching at third base for the Cardinals. He controls the hitter take sign to Maris. Dick Sisler coaching at first base. Here's Santiago getting ready. Brock a lead at second base. There's the glance back. And the pitch. He walks in ball four. And so, the Cardinals candidate for the National League's most valuable player who had himself a banner year with 111 runs batted in, 25 homers, hit 325. Orlando Cepeda comes up to face his friend from Puerto Rico, but right now, baseball enemy. 
Orlando. Digging in. Stands deep. Runners are at first and second. One out. Cepeda is a double play possibility. Because he doesn't get away from the plate well, although he has good straightaway speed once he gets started. The reason that he's a double play uh, possibility is because he hits the ball so sharply. There's the stretch from the belt to pitch. It's a fastball inside. One ball, no strikes. Runners at first and second. In the National League, the opposition tried to jam Cepeda. Fastballs in on his fist. One ball, no strikes. Runners at first and second. Orlando waiting. Santiago glances back. Here's the pit. Inside ball two. McCarver waiting to hit next. And Santiago having trouble. We're in the top of the first inning with no score. Runners are at first and second with one out. Orlando Sopeda digging in. Jose Santiago who had a fine season, winning 12, losing 4 for the Red Sox. Stockley built right-hander. Two balls and nothing. Runners at first and second. Now the signal. The glance back. Maris, a long lead at first base. And the pitch to... Oop, he steps back off the rope. Brock continues to dance around at second base. Now Cepeda digs in. The stretch from the belt. Adair... Jockeying around the pitch swung. High pop foul back out of play. In the stand. Gibson chases it, but no chance. The ball into the stands on the first base side. So the count, two balls and the strike. With two balls, no strike, Santiago threw a fastball. Jam Cepeda with it, and he got around late. The count, two balls and a strike. The outfield, deep everywhere. Cepeda the hitter, Maris at first base. Scott doesn't hold him on, plays deep. Brock at second base, Petroselli and Adair have been doing an excellent job of holding him close. Two balls, one strike. There's Petroselli behind Brock, the pitch. Swung and he fouled it back to the screen. He had a good cut. He was trying to go to the opposite field. That evens it up. And so it's two balls, two strikes. The ball rolls off the screen and back onto the wall. And the Cardinal bad boy, Jerry, picks it up. Runners at first and second one away. Orlando Cepeda the hitter. The Cardinals trying to break out in front. Santiago gets set. The 2-2 pitch. Here's a big one. Her ball high and outside. Barely missed with it. And the crowd groaned on that one. Three balls, two strikes. Cepeda, as the pitch passed the plate, quickly looked back over his shoulder. I don't think he was too sure which way it would be called. Three balls, two strikes, and let's see if the runners break. There's only one out. Cepeda waiting. Brock a lead. Maris is at first. There's the stretch. The hesitation. The whirl and throw to second. Brock is back safely. Adair took the throw. Three balls, two strikes. All year long, the Cardinals run in this situation. And let's see what they'll do in the World Series. There's only one away. The danger of running is that should Cepeda strike out, you'd run into the end of the inning, perhaps. But Brock is fast. Three balls, two strikes. The stretch. There go the runners. The pitch. Bouncing ball to the third base. Steps on third for one. Jones throw to first. Double play. Well, Cepeda hit to a double play. From Dalton Jones to George Scott. And so... In the first half of the first inning, it's no runs, one hit, no errors, one left for the Cardinals. If you're swinging for a new set of snow tires this winter, don't be struck out by a fast-selling pitch. Make the sure hit at your straight-talking BF Goodrich dealer. Ask him about the BFG Trailmaker Silver Top. It's the hardest-hitting snow tire on the road. A tough competitor that digs in deep to keep you going on ice or through heavy snow. It's tough four-ply nylon cord with a husky tread and the deepest biting edges in the business. Tough inside, tough outside. Yet you'll never hear a growl. It rides quiet on wet or dry roads. Trailmaker Silvertown snow tires have stopping power, too. And if the going gets really skittish, you can have your trail makers with steel safety studs. There's no money down with a BF Goodrich Choice Charge Account. 
and installation is free. So make a hit with power driving BF Goodrich Trailmaker Silvertown Snow Tires. Get them now from your straight talking BF Goodrich dealer. Could have got himself, gotten himself in the jam right there. He had runners on first and second and one out. Uh, but he got out of it. Let's see what happens to Bob Gibson. Jerry Adair, right-handed batter. First pitch, he swings, and he misses strike one. Adair hit 273. Three homers and 35 runs batted in. Jerry's been around the American League a little bit with Baltimore. The White Sox, now Boston. The pitch is a fastball, low and outside. Gibson, a fastball pitcher. And a good slider. There are days when his breaking ball is very, very effective. In other days, it might hang. Here's a pitch on the way. And it's a fastball high. Two balls and a strike on Jerry Adair. Danny Popowski coaching at third base. Bobby Doerr at first base. Adair leading off right-handed batter. The Cardinals play him straight away. The wind-up, the pitch. He had a good cut, and he fouled back to the screen. Adair had three homers this season. His biggest year in home runs was 11 with Baltimore in 1962. Right-handed hitter. Two balls, two strikes to count. Now Gibson winds. Here's the pin. Curveball, low and away. The count is full of three and two. And the Red Sox fans, and they're... Legion here today. Wait in expectancy. The pitch. He struck him out swinging on a high fastball. Pee Wee, he may have chased a bad ball. Well, I guess with a fellow like Bob Gibson, he pitches a lot of high, high fastballs, and not too many pitchers can get away with that. But uh, you don't want to take that third strike, and uh, Adair went down swinging. There's one away, and here is Dalton Jones, who started the inning-inning double play for the Red Sox in the first. Here's the pitch to the left-hand hitter, and it's high and outside. Dalton Jones, a line drive hitter, pops that ball to all fields. He hit 289. Three homers, 25 runs batted in. Straddles the plate, Gibson's pitch. It's a fastball, a little bit, bit low, and Gibson wasn't happy about that call. Two balls, no strikes. One out and nobody on, and Carl Yastrzemski will be up there next. The cardinal strategy, if you call it that, two balls, no strikes, the pitch. He swings late in the fastball. The Cardinals hope to be able to keep a Darren Jones off base. So when Yastrzemski comes up, the bases will be empty. They figure he's going to get his hits. Here's the delivery. Swung and missed the curveball. And the count evens at two balls, two strikes. So far, it's only a few pitches, but Gibson is overpowering. Two balls, two strikes. Jones waits. The windup, the pitch. He struck him out swinging. Dalton Jones goes down swinging. And listen to the hand and how richly earned for Carl Yastrzemski. What a year. This fella had a career in one season. 44 homers tied in that department with Carmen Killebro. Here's the wind of the pitch to the left-hand hitter. Fastball a little bit low. He drove in 121 runs, which was tops. He hit 326. That was tops. A triple crown winner and undoubtedly a unanimous MVP. Here's the pitch. Curveball low. He changed up on that one. Two balls, no strikes, two out. Bob Gibson is saying the first too many fakes. Gibson, you know, uh, holds a World Series strikeout record, established in 1964. Now the sign. Two balls, no strikes. Yastrzemski left-handed batter, the pitch. Swings, high pop foul. Cepeda coming down the line. Gibson's calling for a ball, but Gibson, uh, Gibson lets Cepeda take it. Gibson, you know, is that kind of an athlete. But Cepeda took the little pop foul 
and the Red Sox go down in order. And the score at the end of the first inning, St. Louis nothing, Boston nothing. Hello, this is Petula Clark for Plymouth 68. And the beat goes on. Yes, the beat goes on. Last year, over a quarter million owners of other low-priced cars were won over to Plymouth. It started a movement, a momentum, a beat. And the beat goes on. words from your nearby Plymouth dealer. Enjoy the game. We go into the top of the second inning and Tim McCarver will lead it off for the Cardinals who threatened in the first but were retired at San Diego. Forced Orlando Cepeda to bounce into a double play beautifully handled by Dalton Jones at third base who stepped on the bag to force Brock and fired perfectly to Scott to complete the double play. But now it's the second inning, and here's McCarter. He hit 295 his career high this past season. He hit 14 home runs his career high this past season. He drove in 69 runs, which was his career high this past season. Need I tell you, he had his greatest year. The pitch. What? Curveball in there. Strike call. Santiago has a fine curveball. Kim, left-handed batter. Does a little form of calisthenics loosening up up there. Now the sign. Here's the windup. The pitch. A tap foul. Two strikes, no more. The outfield. See, we have noticed it looks like, I guess it's because of this ballpark. It seems like they play all hitters about the same. But it looks that way. I've noticed that in Yastrzemski out in left field, they have a little spot that's worn out there. He plays a little bit more left center, I think, than uh, most outfielders do in most parts. But this park is so short that he just gives them that left field line. Pitch to McCarver. Swung and missed, and he lost his uh, helmet on that one. McCarver goes down swinging. There's a second strikeout for Santiago. And that'll bring up Mike Shannon, the third baseman of the Cardinals. He hit 245 this past year. He had 12 homers. Drove in 77 runs. A tremendously popular athlete being St. Louis born and bred. Here's the windup in the pitch. Curveball line, left field base in. Santiago hung that curveball, and Shannon drilled it like a bullet into left. So Shannon is on with the Cardinals' second hit of the ballgame, and here is Holy and Javier. The Cardinals' second baseman, who hit 281 this season with 14 homers and 64 runs batted in. Shannon at first base with one out. Dal Maxville kneeling in the on-deck circle. Now the signal from the stretch. The pitch. Hooley takes Kerbin into the dirt. Nice play by the catcher, Russ Gibson. One ball, no strikes. One out, one on. No score, second inning, first game of the World Series. Beautiful afternoon. The temperature must be in the 70s. Now Hooley gets set. He has faced Santiago in the Winter Leagues many, many times. Now the stretch. A lead by Shannon. The pitch. Line drive, left center field base hit. Shannon around second base. Will he try for third? Here he comes. Reggie Smith bubbles the ball. And Shannon goes sliding in the third base. Boy, that was some daring on Shannon's part because Reggie Smith has one of the greatest arms in baseball. And had he not fumbled the ball, I think he would have thrown Mike out pretty by a pretty good margin at third base. But the Cardinals were gambling, and they wind up with runners at first and third and one up. 
Harry, I'm kind of sorry to see Reggie Smith fumble that ball because I was telling you last night, if we get an opportunity, this Reggie Smith has one of the finest arms you'll ever see. And you said finer than Carl Farrell, the old outfielder for the Dodgers right fielder. I believe he does have Harry. And he would have had a shot at Mike Shannon in the third base. This is what this Cardinals have done all year. They've taken that gamble. So it's runners at first and third. Let's watch the Red, Red Sox infield. They play halfway around short and second. Down Maxwell, the batter. He hit 227. Had a lot of timely hits. Drove in 41 runs with one homer that inside the park. They're stretched up pitch. Maxfield takes curve outside. Now Javier has better than average speed. Very fast at first base. Shannon's at third base. The infield, Scott holding the runner on at first. Dalton Jones is just a step behind the bag at third. Petroselli and Adair are halfway at short and second. The outfield's playing with Yastrzemski towards left center. A lot of line drives in most ballparks would be extra bases to left center will be easy outs in this ballpark. Runners at first and third. The Cardinals threatening for the second straight inning. Here's Santiago getting set. The stretch. The pitch to Maxville. Woo! He undressed him on that one. That was one right under his chin. That's what you call a major league brushback. And Maxville, his helmet went one way, his bat went another way, and his body went still a third. And I'm glad his body went in the direction it did. Because that way he avoided the pitch. So the count. Two balls, no strikes. Runners at first and third. Maxville likes to hit the run. Especially with Javier at first base, which he is now. Shannon's at third. Two balls, no strikes. The stretch. Javier lead. The pitch. Curve outside. And it's ball three. Now the pitcher, Bob Gibson, will be coming up next. There's no score in this ball game. We're in the top of the second inning. Runners are at first and third with one out. Pee Wee. Harry, at times like this, you've seen it and I've seen it, where you will pitch around this fellow here and hoping that you can get to the pitcher and have an easy out, maybe get two outs and not score, but not with Bob Gibson, the next hitter, because he is a very fine hitting pitcher. Here's the pitch. He walked and ball four, and the bases are loaded. So Maxville has drawn a base on balls, and Bob Gibson, who uh, has bemoaned the fact, he waited, that this has been his fourth season batting in his career. He has hit home runs in the major leagues. This season he hit only 133 with just eight hits and 60 times at bat. A right-handed batter. Activity for the Red Sox in their bullpen. We'll tell you about it in a moment. Bases loaded infield back to pitch to Gibson. Curveball high. Ball one. Lee Sang is warming up in the bullpen out in right center. The manager of the Red Sox is walking slowly out to talk to Jose Santiago. Dick Williams who without any question will be the manager of the year of the American League and maybe the manager of many a year. What a job this fellow did. And while manager Williams walks out to the mound, we'll pause 30 seconds for station identification. If you've grown up around here, chances are you take Saratoga Vichy for granted. Well, don't. What you're being so blasé about happens to be one of the most extraordinary natural products in all the world. People send for it from all over, both for its curious taste and for that remarkably long-lived carbonation the Vichy people are always talking about. Saratoga Vichy, the only mixer we know of that people built a city just to be near. Tom Gibson, low and outside. Ball two. This inning started with McCarver striking out. Shannon lined a single to left. Javier looped a single to center. Shannon going to third. Knoxville walked on four straight pitches. Now Bob Gibson has a count of two balls, no strikes. Now the windup. Here's Santiago's pitch. Ground ball might be a double play. Jones up. Throws to second for one. Over the first base. Cardinals fail to score. It's no runs, two hits, no errors.
first and two left. And the score at the end of an inning and a half, St. Louis nothing, Boston nothing. Your new technocrat razor gives a very nice shave. Crazy about not having to handle razor blades since I got your tectonics razor. I like the light feel of your technotic razor. Curiously smooth shave this morning with your tectonic razor. Did you know a guy could flip that lever for, for a new edge right in the middle of a shave with this technomachrome razor of yours? with your technical razor. The hard pronouncing, easy shaving, Gillette Technic, uh, Technatic razor. Ask your face about it. This is the bright sound in radio. WGY, a General Electric Broadcasting Company station at 810 on your dial in Schenectady, New York. He was just put on. He went out and talked to San Diego. He did that last Saturday. San Diego was a little high with the ball. He told him to keep the ball down, and that's exactly what San Diego did there. And he got another double play and got out of two tough innings. Well, that he did. And the play on Gibson at first base, I was amazed how close it was. Gibson, you know, just uh, had a broken leg this summer. Here's the first pitch swung on by Ken Harris and a fly ball in the right field. Roger Maris there, and he has it. Ken Harrelson, who hit 255 with 12 homers and 54 runs batted in, went after the first pitch and flat out to Maris. That'll bring up George Scott, a popular favorite here. Listen to the crowd. Scott hit 303 with 19 homers. This is WGY, a General Electric Broadcasting Company station. Drove two runs, batted 303, 19 home runs, and a great defensive first baseman. This fellow's got a short left field fence. Here's the pitch. Line drive racing. Left center field, front going over. There's Scott rounding first, holds up there. And there is the first Red Sox hit. A line single to left center by George Scott. Rico Petroselli, the shortstop. When you have a shortstop that hits 17 home runs, you know you have yourself some property. He drove in 66 runs. He hit 259, right-handed batter. Stretch pitch. He swung and he missed. He's trying to go to the opposite field. One strike, no ball. Petroselli, the hitter. Right-handed batter. Scott, the runner at first. Listen to the Red Sox fans. That old staccato applause. Gibson gets it. The pitch. Here it is. He swung it in his strike two. Petroselli had a good cut that time. We're in the second inning. No score. With one out, Scott is single to left center. And Petroselli is the batter. That was the first hit for the Red Sox. Now the stretch. The pitch. High. And Gibson has plenty of smoke. You know, Dalton Jones playing in his first World Series has already tied the World Series record by starting two double plays in the game. That's a record for a third baseman. Sometimes it doesn't take you long to get into that record book in World Series competition, and sometimes some great stars never even played in a World Series. One out, a runner at first. Petroselli, two strikes and a ball. Gibson's pitch. He struck him out swinging. And there's the third strike. Reggie Smith, the center field. He stole 17 bases. He hit 246. He had 15 homers, 61 runs batted in. Switch hitter. Batting left-handed against Bob Gibson. I see Flood is playing him towards left field. They don't play him the pull. In fact, Flood is looking towards Roger Maris for guidance. 
as he moves towards left field out of his center field position. Reggie swings and misses a fastball and had a good cut. Or they say this youngster has a tremendous future. It's his first full year, and it's a good one. He'll hit much higher than 246 before he's through. Great speed, wonderful arm, as we've discussed. The stretch pitch. There goes the runner. Swung, bouncing foul. Pass Bobby Doerr into the Red Sox dugout, or Dick Williams grab that ball. So, two strikes and nothing on Reggie Smith. George Scott, the runner at first base. You know, Scott, for a big fella, can run. He stole 11 bases. The stretch. He has a lead. The pitch. Line foul. Into the stands on the roof in left field. He got around late on that one, Pee Wee. So I guess their defense, they know what they're doing out there. Well, Reggie Smith, he's a few times that I've seen him this year. He's liable to hit the ball anywhere. Of course, Bob Gibson's real good fastball. He's more apt to hit it off over into left field. But if he throws him a curveball, gets it down or in a little bit on him, he'll, he's more apt to pull it. Two strikes is the count on Reggie Smith. Scott a lead. Cepeda holding him on. The pitch. Fastball outside. And the count, two strikes on the wall. I don't believe that was a pitch out, although it was in a pitch out position. We're in the second inning, no score. The Red Sox have just had their first hit. The Cardinals have had three hits so far, have threatened twice, but failed to come across. Throw to first, runner back. Cepeda returns the ball to Bob Gibson. Bottom half of the second inning, no score. Gibson takes his cap off, wipes his face. It's warm down on that field. Now time is called, let's see. Anyway, I wonder if they're getting an admission price out of those fans who are draped around that sign out in center field outside the ballpark. Well, of course, uh, a lot of part of the season, they, uh, they've been up there. We even had a couple of them on the scoreboard out in right field. Of course, they finally chased them off because it's right inside of the ballpark. But they have been trying to get into this ballpark. And, uh, of course, it's standing room only. And that's a nice place to be out there. You know, we have uh, the delay now is because one of the fans is on the top of the green monster right next to the foul pole. And they're trying to get him down. <laughs> so, uh, with a small ballpark here at Fenway, fans are uh, using every devious means of witnessing this spectacle, even to the point of taking their life in jeopardy, as it were, by hanging off signs that are extended some 100 feet above the ground. Reggie Smith is the hitter. Two strikes and a ball to count. We're in the bottom of the second, no score. The runner at first base, George Scott. Gibson's pitch. Here it is. Swung a high pop foul back, and Pee Wee Reese, I thought, might have a foot out, but uh, over his head and onto the roof. Harry, what's your record this year on foul ball? I've been ducking him all the, all this year, Harry. What, how, what's your record with that uh, little basket of yours? <laughs> that net of mine it was in a slump all season long. I think it caught five this year. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. There goes the runner. Swung, and he struck him out. Reggie Smith becomes the fourth strikeout victim for Bob Gibson, who was fan two in each of the first two innings. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. The score at the end of the second inning. St. Louis nothing, Boston nothing. So you've made up your mind. You're going to try a big one, you know. One of those new extra length cigarettes. Well, then this announcement is just for you. If you want a long one, be sure you get the one taste worth making longer. Get the taste of springtime fresh. That's right, the taste of new super king size Salem filter cigarettes. Yes, they're here. Brand new super king size Salem with the extra length that refreshes your taste a few moments longer. And aren't you glad you get a few moments more to enjoy America's favorite mental taste. The freshest taste in smoking now extended just a few moments longer. So if you want to try a big cigarette, don't make a big mistake when it comes to taste. Try new Super King Size Salem. One pack 
And you'll know what we mean when we say, here's the one menthol taste worth making longer. We go into the top of the third. No score. See, we are wondering if this is one of those ball games where one team keeps knocking at the door and never quite arrives, and then the other team suddenly slips in and it's all over. Well, both these clubs, Harry, they have uh, they have pretty good power, and uh, of course there are two pretty good pitchers working out there right now. San Diego, if uh, he can keep the ball down, as you noticed a while ago, he does not have a big curveball, but he has a real quick breaking slider. He keeps the ball down. He's pretty tough, and of course everybody knows that Bob Gibson's tough. So it could be a low-scoring ball game, but uh, maybe they're kind of fencing here and just feeling each other out. We go to the top of the third, and as we do, it'll be the top of the batting order again for the Cardinals. The Redbirds, by the way, have won the series opener only twice, in 1934 and in 1964. They've lost their opening game in World Series competition eight times. Now the Cardinals have won more World Series, seven in ten tries, than any major league club except the Yankees, who won 20 out of 29. Here's Lou Brock. He opened the ball game with a base hit and stole second, but did not score in that first inning. We're in the top of the third, Santiago's first pitch. Brock swings. High fly ball. Deep left field. If it stays fair, let's see. It is a... Foul ball into the left field corner. Lou Brock aiming for that fence. You know, Pee Wee, he has hit home runs into our left field stands in St. Louis, which is a much deeper poke than here in Boston. Yes, it is. I've seen Lou. We've seen uh, the Cardinals a couple of times this year, and I saw him hit two tremendous home runs in right center, too. This fellow, who is not too big, has good power. And as we've said so often, he is not the type of fellow that will only beat you with his bat or with his glove. He can beat you on that base with just a base on ball. The pitch to him. Swung line drive base hit. Lou Brock lines a single in the center field. So he's been to bat twice. He's singled twice. He's batting at 1,000. During the season, he had 206 hits. Roberto Clemente led the league in total hits. Last night, uh, Mr. Harry Carey was making a prediction on the series. He said, my prediction to be the star of this World Series will be none other than Lou Brock. Two for two so far. Not bad, Harry. Well, it's a long way to go in this series, but uh, he's got so many things to star with. Lou Brock, the throw over to first base by Santiago, but he's back there. I got he throws. It might be close, and he is safe. He had a dive back head versus back. He almost got him leaning the wrong way. The Cardinals now have had four hits in this ball game. Kurt Flood, who was out on strikes his first time up as the hitter. A lead by Brock. Santiago ready. The pitch. Inside and high. I noticed Santiago uh, pitched Flood inside his first time at bat. Got him on a curveball over the inside part of the plate. And this pitch to him was inside again. Here's Brock taking a lead. He stole second in the first inning. Here's a single by Brock and a walk to Maris in the first before Cepeda hit to a double play to end the inning. They had singles by Shannon and Javier and a walk to Maxville in the second before Gibson hit to a double play. And now they've got Brock at third and Flood at second. Five hits for the Redbirds were in the third inning. The infield is playing back. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Santiago gets set as Roger Maris waits the pitch. He had a good cut and he fouled back to the screen, strike one. One strike and no ball. Lou Brock at third base. Kurt Flood at second base. Nobody out. The infield playing back, conceding the run for the out. Roger Maris digging in. Here's the pitch. He had a good cut again and fouled it back. Boy, he just had two real rips. This inning started with Lou Brock lining a single in the center field. 
Then Kurt Flood ripped a low line drive into the left field corner for a double. Brock racing to third. That's where he is now. Roger Maris with a count of strike two. Now the signal. Santiago's pitch. And here it is. Swings and he foul tips. Curveball. They like to throw Maris off speed pitches. Here it is. Swings and he foul tips. Curveball. They like to throw Maris off speed pitches, especially when they get in front of him. Roger Maris. Veteran right field. The only man who ever hit more home runs than Babe Ruth. Cardinals threatening for the third straight inning. Now Santiago gets set. The windup, the pitch. Inside fastball. The crowd groans as they thought it might have caught the inside corner. A gutty pitch by Santiago that time. He tried to jam him with the fastball. Almost caught that inside corner. Lee Stang is working out on the bullpen for the Red Sox. Two strikes and a ball on Roger Maris. Cepeda will be next. Now the line. The pitch. Foul tipped. Barely got a piece of the ball. And Santiago has done a tremendous job when the pressure has been on. He got Cepeda to hit into a double play in the first. He got Gibson to roll into a double play in the second. And he is really battling Roger Maris here in the third. Runners at second and third and nobody out. No score. Now the signal. Here's the windup. The pitch to Maris. Smash on the ground. The run will score. Scott up with the ball. Steps on the bag. And Flood advances to third. Roger Maris drives in the first run of the 1967 World Series. A hot shot on the ground to Scott, who fielded the ball, stepped on the bag unassisted, Brock crossing the plate, Flood advancing to third. And now here's Cepeda with the infield coming in. Orlando hitting a double play, as I mentioned in the first. The big man in the Cardinal lineup. Here's a pitch by Santiago. Popped up in foul territory. Dalton Jones has got to play. Makes the catch. Cepeda on the first pitch. Foul to Jones. And Santiago got a big man out. And now with two away, the infield can play in normal position as Tim McCarver comes to the play. Santiago has had the number of his countryman, Orlando Cepeda, the first two times at bat. Each time with men in scoring position. He got him to hit into a double play and got him to pop up with a runner at third. Now there's two out and here's McCarver. He fanned his first time up. Left-handed hitter, the pitch. Curve of beauty hit that outside corner to knee. One strike and no ball. Jam-packed ballpark in Boston. First game of the World Series, the Cardinals are out in front one to nothing. Now Santiago is set. Here's the pin. Outside. That evens it. A ball and a strike. Flood was way down the third baseline, and Gibson, the catcher, took a look at it. Tim McCarver. Left-handed batter. Cardinal catcher. Drove in 69 runs during the season. Here's the pitch. Barely missed the outside corner. McCarver wants a squeeze of that rosin bag. In the 1964 World Series, in the pivotal, pivotal fifth game, after Tommy Tresh, with two out and a man on in the bottom of the ninth, had hit a homer to tie up Gibson 2-2, it was McCarver in the tenth who hit the three-run homer to win the ball game 5-2. And, of course, that was perhaps the key game of the series. Here's a pitch. High. A fastball, ball three. Three balls and a strike. Shannon will be up there next. McCarver takes a look at Joe Schultz coaching third. For the hit or take. With a count, three balls, one strike. Time is called just as Santiago started his wind-up. Wind one to nothing, St. Louis. Top of the third. The Redbirds have had five hits. The Red Sox have had one. Here's the pitch. 
Ball four. He walked him. That is the third pass given up by Santiago. He has certainly been in a lot of trouble, Peeway, and uh, still trails only one to nothing. Yes, he certainly has. He hasn't had his real good control. Of course, as a ball club like the Cardinals, you have to pitch him a little bit carefully. Now, I believe that he did not want McCarver to hit that pitch. He wanted to pitch around him and pitch to Mike Shannon. Of course, Shannon has one for one today, but I believe he would rather pitch to Shannon he had McCarver. All right, here's Mike Shannon. Runners at first and third, two out. Cardinals lead one to nothing. No pitch. Popped it up on the infield. He pulled him with a curveball, and Adair will feel this one. He does. Shannon popped it. Adair. Two hits. No errors. Two left. And the score at the end of two and a half innings is now St. Louis 1, Boston nothing. The guy who can come in off the bench and pinch it for real power, well, he's the kind of insurance every manager likes to have. We mention this because all you grandstand managers are going to need some pinch hitting power real soon. With winter just around the corner, you'll probably be changing the lineup on your car and calling in a set of new snow tires. So why not get yourself the toughest pinch hitters in the entire winter league? BF Goodridge Trailmaker Silvertown Snow Tires. They'll come in cold and hit for power through the heaviest snow. They'll come right down to grips with ice, take off smooth in the most skittish places. They're built with new, customized nylon core, so they can take the pounding for a long winter season and come back next year for more. And if you wish, they can be equipped with steel safety studs. No need for any money down with a BFG Choice Charge Account. And installations absolutely free. BF Goodrich Trailmaker Silvertown Snow Tires, only at your BF Goodrich store or dealer. Well, so far it's been Bob Gibson and the Cardinals. Uh, the St. Louis Cardinals have one run on five hits. The Boston Club has not done too much with Gibson. They have no runs on one hit. The first hitter for the Boston Red Sox will be the catcher, Russ Gibson. Harry Carey. All right, Pee Wee Gibson, who hit two or three with one homer, 15 runs batted in during the season. He is uh, not known as much for his hitting as for his defensive ability behind the plate. But these are the kind of fellows sometimes who are the stars in the World Series. There's a curveball, swung on and missed. Gibson is fan four. He's allowed one hit. He hasn't walked anybody. He leads one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the third. Now the pitch. He swings at a curve and he misses it. Two strikes. No more. Russ Gibson. He's been in the Red Sox organization. Up and down. Here's the pitch. Curveball outside. Been with the Red Sox since 1957. Last year he's at Toronto. Now the pitch to him. He struck him out. Gibson becomes Gibson's. Russ Gibson becomes Bob Gibson's fifth strikeout victim. In fact, that's three strikeouts in a row for Gibson. After Scott singled in the second, he fanned Petroselli and Reggie Smith. Now he opens a third, striking out Russ Gibson. Here's Jose Santiago, right-handed batter. He had eight hits during the season. One home run, the pitch. Strike called a fastball. Drove in three runs, he hit 190. Right-handed batter, as he is a right-handed pitcher. One out, nobody on base, we're in the third. Here's the pitch. Foul back to the screen. And Gibson is out in front of San Diego. Two strikes, no ball. Gibson, who is fan, five already. The last three in succession. And he's ahead of San Diego, two strikes, no balls. Cardinals leading the third, one to nothing. Now the line, the pitch. Swung late, foul back. Into the press box, almost got Bob Addy. The Washington sports writer and Neil Russo, the St. Louis Post is back. They didn't show me too much courage on that one, Pee Wee. I don't blame him. <laughs> 
Discretion's a better part of valor anyhow. Here's a pitch swung. There's a five. Way back. It might be out of here. It could be. It is. A home run. distinction for a pitcher who remembers a base hit any time. A home run in the World Series. Jose will be talking about that one for the rest of his life. Here's the pitch to Dalton Jones. Swung and foul back. One strike, no ball. I imagine Bob Gibson will be talking about it, too, with no balls and two strikes on him. He does not make that mistake too often, especially to a pitcher. He probably got a little careless. One strike, no balls. The pitch, and it's a little bit low. Mudcat Grant of the Twins was the last pitcher to hit a home run in the World Series back in the, two years ago, 1965. Down the line, the pitch. Fouled it back to the screen. Two strikes and a ball on left-hand hitting Dalton Joe. Bob Gibson, who is fan six. He's allowed two hits, but one of them a home run by Jose Santiago. signal. Waiting. Here's the pitch. Broken bat, top fly, got a chance to drop. Here's Javier going out. Cepeda goes out and Orlando makes the catch. Cepeda ran down the right field line and grabbed Dalton Jones' top fly. So it is one run, one hit. No errors, nobody left. And the score at the end of three innings. Hello, this is Petula Clark for Plymouth 68. And the beat goes on. Yes, the beat goes on. Last year, over a quarter million owners of other low-priced cars were won over to Plymouth. It started a movement, a momentum, a beat. And the beat goes on at your Plymouth dealers. Styles have come and surely styles will go. Plymouth beauty does go on and on, as does your Plymouth dealer's great deals. See him now. He'll show you how last year's success cars are even more beautiful for 68. And the beat goes on. Yes, the beat goes on. And now, three important words from your nearby Plymouth dealer. Enjoy the game. Brand new ball game, Pee Wee. We go to the top of the fourth. All tied up, 1-1. And Cooley and Javier, who singled his first time up, will lead it off of the cart. The pitcher, Santiago. 
with two strikes, no balls, Homer. To the left center field screen, the pitch to Huli. Swung, ground ball, up the middle, in the center, base hit. Petroselli dove for the ball, but couldn't reach it. So Javier, like Brock, now has had two hits. This is the third time, the third inning out of the four play, that the Cardinals' leadoff man has hit safely. Here's Dow Maxville. Now here's a situation where Maxville likes to hit and run. With Javier on at first base and nobody out. The pitcher Bob Gibson will be up there next. Let's see how the Cardinals play it here. Javier lead the stretch by Santiago. Here's the pitch. Swung, trying to hit the right and foul back and out of play. One strike, no ball. Beautiful afternoon at Fenway Park in Boston. A capacity crowd, of course. And seeing a good ball game, tied up 1-1. Bob Gibson against Santiago. Jim Lomborg will pitch tomorrow for the Red Sox against Dick Hughes for the Cardinals. Throw it to first, the runner back. Javier, good speed, as I believe I mentioned before. Maxwell likes to hit the ball to the opposite field. The stretch, the pitch. Curveball low. So it's a ball and a strike on the right-hand hitting shortstop of the Cardinals. Dow Maxwell who has a degree in electrical engineering from Washington University. Now the sign. Javier lead. Hello. My go. There he goes. A pitch swung, a high bouncing ball towards second. And there's only play as to first base, and he gets him. But Javier has advanced to second base. Maxville, with the hit run on, bounced a high chopper. Over the pitcher's head, Adair's only play was to first base, and then he just barely got Maxville, and there's one away. Bob Gibson steps up. He hit into a double play with the bases loved in the second. The Cardinals now have had six hits, scored one run. They've had runners at first and second with one out and failed to score, and the bases loaded with one out and failed to score. Here's a pitch to Gibson, swung hard and missed. Had runners at second and third with nobody out in the third and got only one run. So they've had a lot of opportunities. Bob Gibson for a pitcher, not a bad hitter. Javier, a long lead at second base. Here's the pitch. Gibson swings and pulls it foul. <laughs> right. Jesse Bush, the owner of the Cardinals, almost grabbed that one. Hit them right in front of him. Two strikes and nothing on Gibson. Santiago, a big number 30 on the back of his uniform. Gibson's number is 45. Cardinals have their names across the back of their shirts. Here's the stretch. The pitch to Gibson. Low almost threw it away. Nice stop by Russ Gibson. A runner at second base. There's one out. Lou Brock will be coming up next. Brock has had successive singles two times at bat. He's had a stolen base. He has scored the only run. Bob Gibson in the hole. Two strikes and the ball. Now the glance back. Julio lead the pitch. Curve strike three. Gibson is called out on strike. Well, I tell you, there was some difference between the pitch Santiago made to Gibson with two strikes and the pitch Gibson made to Santiago with two strikes. I was just thinking that, Harry, on the first pitch when he hit no balls and two strikes on Bob Gibson, Santiago threw that curveball low and almost threw it away. And on I guess him two balls and two strikes and one ball, he really does break off a real good curved ball and caught him looking. All right, here's Lou Brock. Each of his other two times at bat, he was leading off the inning. This time, he comes up with two out and a man in scoring position. Left-handed batter waits. Here's Santiago's pitch. It's a curveball outside, ball one. Brock is the type of hitter that you really cannot defense. By that, I mean you can't play him to pull. You can't play him to hit to the opposite field. You can't play him straight away because he hits the ball everywhere. 
He can hit home runs down the left field line as well as down the right field line. His power alleys are left center and right center. He can bunt. He's just a good hitter. Left-handed batter away. One ball, no strike. Now the signal. Santiago is fifth. And here it is. Ground ball on the third base line. Foul. By about a foot. And the crowd drones on that one because that one looked like it might stay fair and go into the corner. And the count is one ball, one strike. Two men are out. We're in the fourth. Lou Brock's about it. Brock hit 299 during the regular season. Had 21 homers. Left hand batter waits. Now Santiago gets set. Javier Lee to second base. From the belt, the fifth. Low outside. Two balls and a strike. Santiago on this time at bat on Brock is really moving the ball around. First inside, then outside. And everything's been low to him. Two balls and a strike. The game is tied. We're in the fourth. Santiago glances back at Javier and pitches. Brown ball, headed for left field, a base hit, here's Javier around third, he's got a chance to score, yes, sir, he's throw, he is out at the pace, that pace of the throw. Oh, yes, sir, he charged that base hit like an infielder, picked the ball up on the run, fired a strike all the way on the fly to Gibson, and threw out Javier trying to score. tell me that the average guy has about 15,000 whiskers on his face, and that adds up to a lot of shaving day in and day out. That's the best reason I can think of for using Gillette Foamy. No other shaving creams in this league. Gillette Foamy is as rich and thick and moist and full of lather as your beard has ever come up again, and there's a mountain of shaving comfort in every can. No wonder it's the number one choice among men. So remember... Nobody makes a lather like Foamy. Nobody makes a lather like Gillette. Flare. Flare. Let you write the way you feel. Flare. Flare. You can write angry. Flare. Flare. You can write happy. The flare. Very, very small. Yeah. Or ten feet tall. Flare. Flare is different. Flare. No ballpoint. No pen point. Flare. Flare has a smooth nylon tip that stays firm, stays sharp. Flare. 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 By Paper Mate. Call your fancy. Getting a great hand. It's the first pitch of one hop to Javier, who throws him out at first base. And there's one gone here in the bottom of the fourth. See, we, uh, only a, uh, a professional who's been through it all and been down on the field and in that gray and white uniform in these kind of games, I guess, could really appreciate all of the fans did too, the ability necessary to make the kind of a throw that Yastrzemski did. And I know you want to comment on it, but first, here is Ken Harrelson taking a curveball for a strike. Well, I've seen Yastrzemski do that so many times this, this year. He'll go out to his right and make a rifle throw to second base. He really did charge that ball. And it's remarkable how well he throws it. Now, that play was a tough bounce when he picked the ball up, Harry. But he came up throwing and threw a strike to the catcher. Russ gets it at home. All right, here's a pitch to Harrison. It's a curveball high. So it is two balls and a strike. One out. Yasemski charging that ground ball thing on the left, like an infielder, Mike, at full speed, picking it up, and firing all in one motion. And what a strike. They had Javier at the plate, quite obviously. Here's a pitch to Harrelson. Swung on, popped up. 
right center. Javier backing out. Maris coming in. Flood calls for the ball and makes the catch. Carlson popped the flood in short right center. Here's George Scott who got the first hit. You know, the Cardinals have had seven hits and three bases on balls already in four innings and have scored only one run. It's <laughs> almost unbelievable. Here's Scott. And here's the pitch. Long, and he fouled it back, and boy, he ought to cut at that one. One strike, no ball. Pee Wee, how can you have 10 men on base and four innings and score only one? That's what I was thinking. It seems like this score should be about 5 to 1 in, in favor of the Cardinals. But here it is, 1 and 1, with the bottom half the fourth inning. And they say that's the way the Red Sox have played them all year long. Here's the fastball in the red strike call. Two strikes, no ball. Two men around, nobody on base, game tied, 1-1, one, one. a lot of action in this one. Here's the pitch. Boom, foul back. Into the press box. The, uh, I think the Western Union man wound up with that one. <laughs> Two strikes, no balls, George Scott the hitter. Gibson getting ready. In the excitement of the play at the plate, here's the pitch. Almost chased and held up in time. Two strikes and a ball. In the excitement of the play at the plate, my candidate for our star of the series, Lou Brock, out his third hit the way to pitch. <laughs> High and inside. Two balls, two strikes. Brock has had three hits in a row. You can really pick him, man. <laughs> two away. Right-handed batter digging in. George Scott. Gibson trips. Here it is, and it's a fastball low. Ball three. Rico Petroselli will be next. Scott has a short left field porch here at this ballpark, but he hits the ball more to left center and straightaway center field. He has great power. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the fifth. Line drive. Big left field. Way back and drop. Off the fence. Second, the throw. He is safe with a double. George Scott lines a double off the left center field wall. You know, see, we there's an example. Everybody talks about how short that fence is, which it is. But there are a lot of balls hit to left center, line drives, and then other parts which travel for home runs. They only hit that wall and go for either singles or doubles. That's so true, hey, because a lot of times it's, it's not easy to hit a home run in this ballpark unless you hit a high drive or high high ball because it'll still catch part of that wall. It must be at least 60 feet high. Rico Petroselli swings at the first pitch and there's a fastball up around his Adam's apple. One strike and no ball. Two out. The Red Sox have had only three hits, but they've played long ball. A home run by Santiago and a long double by George Scott. Here's the pitch. He swings at a curve. He tried to stop the adjacent. And Gibson's ahead of him. Two strikes, no ball. The game tied. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Rico Petroselli. With a count of two strikes, no ball. The pitch. He struck him out swinging. That seven strikeout for Gibson. No run. One hit. No errors. One left. And the score now at the end of four innings remains. The Boston Red Sox won the St. Louis Cardinals one. <laughs> I'm 
message is strictly for smokers who never tasted a camel cigarette. Camel smokers, you know what we mean. You other guys, start walking. This is Howie Carey with Pee Wee Reese. We're going into the top of the fifth of an exciting ball game, all tied up 1-1, one, one, and here's Kurt Flott. He fanned in the first, he doubled in the third. Santiago's first pitch to the fifth. Swung, line drive in the left field. Yastrzemski going back. Reese first base Holy cow, what a play. said, well, this guy had such a superhuman year, you couldn't expect him to continue it in the World Series. Well, I got news for you. He's still doing it. Here is Roger Maris, one out for pitch. Curve ball inside. Flood was robbed of a double. Yastrzemski went back, leaped high in the air, and made a spectacular backhanded stab. The pitch to Maris. Popped up. Short right field. Might drop. Everybody chasing it. Base hit. Maris drops the single between Adair, Smith, and Harrelson. And that'll bring up Cepeda with a runner at first and one out. That is now eight hits for the Cardinals. Not counting one that Flood was robbed of a moment ago. Yes, Sumsky has been the defensive wizard. If there's such a thing as Superman in baseball... The Red Sox left fielder's got to be it. Here's Cepeda. He failed twice with men on base. And let's see if Santiago goes to the well once too often against him. The pitch. Curveball low. One ball, no strike. What a game this is, Pee Wee. A guy hits the ball like Flood and just an A-B. Just an out. Then you bloop one like Maris and you get a base hit. Here's the pitch. Pop straight up. On the infield. George Scott into the ball. He's got it. I bet you right now, Cepeda is glad that Santiago is in the American League. Because his countryman certainly has uh, handled them well so far. Well, it looks to me like at uh, Orlando Cepeda will get a free meal from Jose Santiago tonight because he said if he got a couple of base hits, of course, this ball game is no with, but he's handling pretty easily so far. Here's McCarver with Maris at first base and two out. The Cardinals have hit Santiago. They've had a lot of opportunities. A fine play by Yastrzemski with a perfect throw to the plate kept him from scoring in the fourth. And a remarkable catch by Yastrzemski in this inning has stopped him in the fifth. Now McCarver's up there. The pitch. Wings and he fouls it. McCarver hasn't had a real good cut at Santiago. Just, uh, he hasn't quite zeroed him in. Might be one of the few times he has faced him. Santiago is a member of the Kansas City Club. Faced the Cardinals in uh, spring training in Florida. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. Tough ball outside. That evens it. A ball and a strike. Maris at first base. Two men are away. We're in the fifth. The crowd's still buzzing a little bit about Yastrzemski's last beat. A remarkable leaping backhanded stab. Here's the stretch. The pitch. All back. Just above us onto the roof. So McCarver is in the hole, two strikes and a ball. Shannon will be up there next. We're in the fifth. A lot of things have happened, but the score is one and one. And Santiago hit the home run for that run for the Red Sox. Meanwhile, the Cardinals have had base runners all over the place. the signal given from the belt the pitch popped up that'll be an easy out Gibson the catcher off at the mask getting under the ball and he takes 
Carver fouled against him. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. At the end of four and a half innings, the score is St. Louis one, Boston one. Does the mystery of buying tires scare you a little bit? Who can blame you? You walk into the average tire store, and the place is loaded with mysterious goings on. Even the language they use is mysterious and confusing. Terms like low profile, cross brace tread. It's like a bad dream. Well, the nightmare is over. B.F. Goodrich has swept away the mystery of tire buying with straight talk. All you do at B.F. Goodrich is tell them how you drive, how fast, how much, and they tell you what tire is best for you. They do it with a tire value calculator, a little device that sizes up your driving habit and picks the one B.F. Goodrich tire that suits you best. They even save you money. <laughs> Never again will you be caught in a web of confusion on tire buying day. Great talk from B.F. Goodrich. We'll see to that. Reggie Smith leads it off. Bottom of the fifth tied 1-1. Fan his first time up. Gibson has struck out seven. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Smith, left-handed hitter with good speed. The wind-up, the fifth. High fly ball, center field. Kurt Flood getting the beat on it, and now Maris comes over. And Maris makes the catch. They almost collided. Maris crossed in front of a flood. They banged each other. That right field right now seems like the tough sun field, do we? It is, Harry. Uh, of course, it's a little bit earlier today when we started the game at 1 o'clock. But usually when the game starts at 2 o'clock or 2.15 here, it's right in the second baseman's eyes and the right fielder's eyes. But it'll get a little worse as the game progresses. Gibson, Russ Gibson, right-handed batter will be the hitter here. Ball game on the fifth, tied up 1-1. One, one. I tell you, this, <laughs> these first five innings have had a lot of action. Although the score is only 1-1. One one. They tell me, Yastrzemski, here's the pitch, and there's a strike call. They say Yastrzemski could run for mayor. I think he could run for governor. <laughs> In this state, here's the pitch. High pop foul back. Two strikes, no ball. Happy to see it for the youngster, Peely. He's a wonderful lad. And he had a couple of uh, years when things were a little tough for him around here. But he rallied like the thoroughbred, and he's had a, a tremendous season. Here's a pitch high. Russ Gibson, who hit 203 during the regular season. He had one homer. Jose Santiago had one homer during the regular season, and now he has hit one in the World Series. Here's a pitch. He almost chased it. Stopped in time. The count evens up. Two balls, two strikes. Where do you hear the hand that Santiago probably will get when he comes up next? Here's the pitch. He struck him out. The eighth strikeout for Gibson. There's two outs. Listen to the hand for Jose Santiago. He homered with a count of two strikes and no balls in the third. Right-handed batter, here's the pitch. There's a strike call. Santiago with eight hits during the regular season. One of them a home run. Out of it. He had a good cut. I tell you, he's no joke with that bat. Whenever you swing the bat like that, you're liable to hit a home run. He had a cut. Two strikes, no ball. Two out, nobody on. Gibson's fit. He threw his bat at a curveball striking out. 
So, that's nine strikeouts for Gibson and five innings. And one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five, the Cardinals won Boston one. Hello, this is the Tula Clark of Plymouth 68. And the beat goes on. Yes, the beat goes on. Last year, over a quarter million owners of other low-priced cars were won over to Plymouth. It started a movement, a momentum, a beat. And the beat goes on at your Plymouth dealers. Does go on and on, as does your Plymouth dealer's great deal. See him now. He'll show you how last year's success cars are even more beautiful for '68. And now three important words from your nearby Plymouth dealer. Enjoy the game. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Here are all the Warrior games on KNBR, AM and FM, San Francisco. The man at the gas pump doesn't always remember to ask you if your wiper blades have gone dead and can't stop streaking your windshield. So if they are streakers, remind him to show you a pair of fresh, new Anco anti-wind lift blades or refills. He can slip them on in seconds, and you're ready for any storm. Anco by Anderson. It's high time for Hire's Root Beer. High time for the distinctively satisfying taste that only Hire's Root Beer has. This is Howie Carey at Fenway Park. We're going to the top of the six with the score all tied up. Boston won, St. Louis won. And now here to tell you all about it is Pee Wee Reese. Okay, Harry, thank you very much and a fine job. A job well done with the top half of six and in the first hitter for the Cardinals will be Mike Shannon. Let's see what he's done today. Shannon. He's one for two. Got a base in his first time up in the second inning. Jose Santiago all the way for the Boston Red Sox. Ball hit hard. It's a base hit out in the center field. Reggie Smith, the center fielder, down on one knee. Picks the ball up. And Shannon makes a ton at first base back in there. So these Cardinals, I'm telling you, they've done a little bit of everything today. They have one run on nine hits. They scored one run in the third inning. The Boston ball club tied it up. They have one run on three hits in the third inning on Jose Santiago's home run. Yes, sir, of all people, the pitcher. Bob Gibson made a bad pitch to him with 0-2 count on him, and he put it up in that screen out over this big green wall in left field. The hitter now is the Daniel Little second baseman, Javier, and what a year he had. He's two for two today. He has good speed. Hard to double this man up. Mike Shannon at first base. Watch him. They they like to run this ball club. A curveball in there for call strike one. This Cardinal ball club is called the Chicago White Sox with power. They like to run. And they do. If you throw them out, it doesn't bother them. They'll come back running again. The score is one and one, though. The Red Sox are right in there. Fell in the left field, the name of Yastrzemski, made a couple of great plays. Threw a runner out at home. As Harry told you, charged the ball like a shortstop, which he was at one time. Javier looked like he was just trying to slap the ball in the right field. Did not have too good of a cut. The count now is 0-2. No balls and two strikes on Javier. Hey, we, uh, Javier is a threat, a home run threat in this ballpark. Uh, any hanging, breaking ball, he'll hit on that screen. He's had quite a year. Yes, he has. Javier will be followed by the shortstop, Dal Maxwell, and then the pitcher, Bob Gibson. San Diego takes a look at Shannon. A curveball way outside. Makes the count one ball and two strikes on Javier. If the count gets two to two, two and two, be careful. May Sunday, San Diego taking a little time. Javier checking with his coach, Joe Schultz, to third base. Javier has a cold snap. His front foot is way in, his front foot is back. Back foot is way back, rather. Little tap is foul down the third baseline. And the count remains. One ball and two strikes. 
Pee Wee Lee Stang is up on the bullpen for the Red Sox again. It's about the third time that he's gotten up out there. He's <laughs> now One ball, two strikes on Javier, the second baseman. He has two for two today. On the season, he batted a fine 281. He had 14 home runs. Good power. That ball high and inside makes the count two and two. Let's see, Phil Finney now with a count two balls and two strikes. There's no one away, and the score here, Cardinals won, and the Boston Red Sox won. The Cardinals have nine hits, and the Red Sox only have three, but one of them was a big one by the pitcher, a home run, Jose Santiago. Two and two is the count on Javier. Santiago looks over at Santa. He did not go with a foul tip. Same two teams will be right back here tomorrow. Well, I certainly hope that you fans can be with us. Harry Carey and I, Kiwi Reese, will be bringing you to tomorrow's game, the second game of the World Series, right here at Fenway Park. Certainly hope that you're enjoying the game today. I know one thing, it's a big deal for me. Two and two is a count on Javier. No one away, runner on first base, Mike Shannon. Santiago comes set. The ball gets away from Gibson. Here goes the runner, Shannon, diving in there. Head first dive like the old Pepper Martin of the Cardinals. No play but Gibson as the ball gets away from him. And it was a pass ball on the catcher, Gibson. The count three balls and two strikes on Javier, who can handle that bat. No one away. Let's see if he tries to hit that ball on the ground to the right and get the runner to third base. So the fly ball will score him. The next hitter will be Dal Maxwell. Not too big of a lead by Shannon down in second base. He comes up a couple of steps. There's a tap foul down the third baseline. Playing Javier straight away. The right fielder, Ken Harrelson, he's playing in a few steps. Here's Simpson in that familiar spot of his out there in left field. Straight away on practically every hitter. He can move. Here's Simpson I'm talking about. Quite a ball player. Does not have a hit in this game, but made a couple of great plays. A three and two pitch by Santiago. He struck him out. That's the fourth strikeout for big number 30, Santiago, as Javier goes down swinging. Brings up the shortstop, Dal Maxwell. He has grounded out twice. He's 0 for 2. During the season, Walked once and got it out. He's 0 for 1 today. On the season, he batted 227. But Harry, who has seen this young fellow all year, said he's gotten some important hits. Like Shannon down at second base, the curveball. Looks to me like San Diego has kind of settled down a little bit. He's gotten a couple of jams the first two innings of this ball game and pitched out of them. The score was one and one. The Cardinals scored one in the third. So did the Boston Red Sox. When the top half of six sitting, San Diego looks back at Shannon to second base, who's dancing around. That on curveball is popped up, and Gibson, the catcher, should have a shot at it. Here comes George Scott. Look out! George Scott, Gibson took the ball. The catcher, and George Scott, ran right by. I'm telling you, that's a lot of beef. <laughs> George Scott, they call him Taters. I imagine uh, maybe Russ Gibson had trouble locating the ball because it, uh, it was quite obviously in his territory. Scott had a run about 90 feet from his position. And boy, he was, just, he was really motoring. Harry, I'm glad you noticed that because we were doing a game here the other day and Gibson lost two balls. 
on two pop-ups the same way, and George Scott caught one of them and couldn't get to the other one. So he has a little trouble taking the ball up here, and the sun is very high. The high fly out to left field. Yastrzemski shading in his eyes. He doesn't need the ball and takes it for out number three. That's all for the Cardinals here in the top half of the sixth inning. No runs, one hit, no eyes, and one man left on base. So after five and a half innings of play, it's the St. Louis Cardinals one and the Boston Red Sox one. I had a terrible experience the other day. I went to buy a pack of short, super stainless blades with a miracle plastic coating on the edge. So I asked the man for short, super stainless, and he said, they call it the spoiler. It's an all of money to call it the spoiler. Why don't you ask for the spoiler? Why are you coming here and ask for Gillette Super Stainless? Did he scare me? I don't know what to ask for the spoiler. To go to another store from now on. Heads Up Hair Groom has come up with a nice discovery for the man whose hair gets musk. If you use Heads Up this morning, don't put more Heads Up on. You can regroom your hair anywhere you are with just a little water or a comb. We don't know how many times water will bring heads up back to life again after one application. All we can say is, try it and see. Heads up, hair groom, in bottles or tubes, by Gillette. Bottom half the sixth inning here at Fenway Park. Harry Carey and I'm Pee Wee Reese. Bringing you the first game of the World Series. Harry, it's quite a thriller. Yes, and the Red Sox have a put their batting order coming up, uh, Pee Wee, with Jerry Adair stepping into the batter's box right now. Adair. He has struck out twice. Bob Gibson. Ball hit down to the third baseman. Mike Santa makes a great play. What a play he made. That ball was right over the bay. A short hop in between her. And he came up with it, made a sidearm toss to Orlando Cepeda, getting Jerry Adair. Didn't look to me like Pepper Martin on that one. I tell you, that young man deserves a lot of credit, Pee Wee. He's become quite a third baseman. Never played the position before in his life. Dalton Jones. Takes the first pitch. Ball one. Dalton Jones struck out and popped up. He's all for two. A fastball and a dandy in there. The call strike one, one ball and one strike. The score here, one run for the Cardinals, nine hits. Boston, one run on three hits. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning of the Red Sox. Trying to go ahead of the Cardinals. We've had everything to happen in this game. Some real fine plays. Little hitting, good pitching. strike on Dalton Jones. Here's a fellow that looked real sharp for the Red Sox a lot of part of this season. A good hitter. They say they have a trouble finding a spot for him to play. That pitch is outside. Dalton Jones will be followed by Carl Yastrzemski. Ball right back to the middle of the base hit. Turn at first base, Dalton Jones. Up with the ball out in center field, Kirk Clark. Well, you can hear the ovation, and he deserves it. Carl Yastrzemski. He hasn't done anything at the bat, but he's made a couple of great plays in the outfield. Run away, Dalton Jones on at first base. Game is all tied up here at Fenway Park. Yes, Dempsey takes the first pitch. It's low and outside for ball one. You know, Bob Gibson had his ankle broken during the season. He's a big, strong boy. He has pitched four times since coming back, and he's looked real sharp. He won three of them. You saw him, Harry. Actually, Pee Wee, he pitched better after returning from the uh, disabled than he did before. And he's throwing as well today as I've seen him throw at any time. 
One ball, one strike on Carl Yastrzemski, who holds the bat high. Close stance. Pulls the ball more this year. Out gets a good fastball. Blown away. Yastrzemski did not like the call. And, of course, the fans here at Fenway Park didn't like the call. Most of the sports writers have picked the Cardinals to win this series. Yastrzemski shouldn't be no trouble for the left fielder, Lou Brock. He's underneath it and takes it for out number two. You talk about nonchalance, when you see on that fly ball, Brock actually took his eyes off the ball to see where the runner, Dalton Jones, was. And then located again in the catch. I noticed that, Harry. I thought he may be pulling some kind of a trick play there. <laughs> That's kind of dangerous to take your eye off of that ball, but he did look to see where Dalton Jones was. He was going back to first base, and it brings up Ken Harrelson. 0 for 2. Tries to check his swing, gets a piece of the ball, fouls it back. One strike on Ken. I got a big kick out of Ken Harrelson on a Saturday. That big game with Minnesota, they said, Pee Wee, I'm telling you, I am really nervous. I said, well, it'll leave you. Again, when the game starts, if it doesn't, you're in trouble. Now the straight back. 0-2. No balls and two strikes on Ken Harrelson. This fellow has good power. Start of the season now with Kansas City. Got a real good break. Release and came over here with the first base ball club and won the pennant. A little extra money beside. Bob Gibson. He has struck out nine in this ball game, and he's on top of Harrelson. 0-1-2. Let's see how he pitches him. Well, he tried to get him go fishing, but he didn't go. Harrelson held up. One ball and two strikes. A runner on at first base, Dalton Jones. The score one and one in the bottom half of the sixth inning. San Diego all the way for the Red Sox. And Bob Gibson all the way for the Cardinals. He pops it up. Tim McCarver calling for it. Here comes the pitcher, but McCarver takes it. And that's all for the Red Sox here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. The score after six full innings, St. Louis one and Boston one. Top of the seventh, and Lou Brock will be leading it off for the Cardinals. He's had a perfect day, three out of three, and this is the third time in this ballgame, Pee Wee, that he's been the first man up in the inning. And he has been tough, as you said, three for three, and you keep getting this man on you and get yourself in trouble. Brock, could it be four for four? Yes, sir. Base it out into right field by Jerry Adair. Ken Harrelson up, and Brock makes a big turn, but goes back into first base. 52 stolen bases. We'll have to watch him. Now, Pee Wee's had two hits into the center field, one hit to left field, and one hit to straightaway right field. So he's hit the ball to every field today with getting four for four. I would say that he's pretty hard to defend against. And with his speed, he gets the ball down that line. You better hustle it back in here to have a triple. Kurt Flood, who's batting second and remarkably hitting 335. And that's a tough position to hit 330 in or hit 300 because a lot of times you have to give yourself up. By that I mean with a runner on second base or that man, if you hit and run a lot, you have to get a piece of that ball. You don't get your ball to hit. But here's a man hit 335. Had quite a year, Kurt Flood. Lou Brock, and there he goes. The throw by Gibson, it's in there, but he didn't get him. The throw was a little high. 
if he were that I had him that time. The throw had been down a little bit. Petroselli still thought he had him, but the throw was up around his eyes. By the time he came down, Lou had slid in there. What a day he has had. The score here, one run, ten hits for the Cardinals. One run, four hits for the Boston Red Sox. But the Red Sox are threatening here in the top half to seventh inning. Kurt Flood, let's see if he goes to right field as Kurt, as Lou Brock just stole second to try to get him to third. That's what he was trying to do, and he fouled hard off the strike in the stands. Lou Brock, who stole 52 bases, very few of them were over to third base. Most of his stolen bases are from first to second. Four hits, but Brock ties a series record held by many. Nobody has ever had five. Curveball just missed. Low and outside. Two balls, one strike on Kirk Flood. A runner down at second base. Lou Brock. The game is all tied up one and one. San Diego all the way for the Red Sox. He's looking back at Brock. Foul tip makes a count two and two. There's John Wyatt out in the bullpen along with uh, a 19-year-old youngster named Ken Brett, Pee Wee. Of course, I've seen John Wyatt. I've never seen this young left-hander, Brett, but they say he can bring it pretty hard. Well, Kurt Flood did what he intended to do. He hit a ground ball down to George Scott, who took the play himself. But on the play, Brock moved to third. Now then, let's see if the infield will be playing in as big Roger Maris comes up. The score is one and one. The tie-breaking run is down at third base. In Lou Bach. One away. The infield is in. They're playing Roger Maris deep and straight away. Top half the seventh inning. I've, I've never seen Brock steal home, baby. That's funny, Harry. I used to be the same way. I, got, I used to steal quite a few bases when I played. I never did like to steal home. I was always afraid of that batter may not see me coming in there. Let a foul straight back. There's San Diego trying to keep that ball down and away from Roger Maris. Brock back to third. Count is one ball and one strike. It's one away. Roger Maris on deck. Orlando Cepeda. And he has not given San Diego too much trouble today. Maris. One for two. As a pitch is high and outside. Two balls and one strike as Maris checks with his coach, Joel Schultz. At third base, coaching at first base for the Cardinals, Dick Sisler. Jerry Adair came up with the ball, but he has no play on Brock. He dove for the ball. Down on his knees, he had to flip the ball over to George Scott. So that makes the score two to one in favor of the Cardinals. And they have been threatening in every inning, but they still only have two runs off of San Diego, ten hits. The Red Sox have one run on four hits. Orlando Cepeda. He's all for three. He takes the first pitch. One ball on Orlando. San Diego. In there. All strike one, one ball and one strike. San Diego looking for his... Well, on the year, he had 12 wins and four losses. You know, Peewee, the Cardinals have had 10 hits, and yet their two runs have scored on infield outs. Both time and Maris has driven in the runs with infield outs. Yeah. As a line drive, but it's foul. It's 
kind of been a strange game. It's a very interesting game. We had a lot of things happen in it. But as we said, my goal, it looks like the Cardinals should be about three or four runs out in front. But this Red Sox ball club, don't ever count them out. They have been coming from behind all year. They seem to thrive on pressure. They're a very competent ball club. Has a pitch, it's too high. Two balls and two strikes. In fact, you may even think that they're a little cocky sometimes, but I guarantee you that that doesn't hurt. The two and two pitch. He struck him out on a side on curveball. That's all for the Cardinals here in the top half of the seventh inning. One run, one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. So the score at the six and a half innings of play, it's the Cardinals two and the Boston Red Sox one. Notice how many infielders have the uncanny knack of always being right in front of the ball. They're in position, they're on their toes, and when the grounder comes, they're right there to make the play. Well, you know, most offensive drivers have the same ability. They know how to anticipate trouble and to be ready when it comes. But when it comes, and it won't be long now, they get set for snow and icy roads with a set of new snow tires. And the snow tires many good drivers prefer are BF Goodrich Trailmaker Silvertown. They're built of the toughest floor ply nylon card and have the deepest biting edges you can buy. The Trailmaker tread is wide and deep, sends you over icy roads with sure footed safety. Trailmakers are right, too. And they won't put you into the poorhouse either. You can get your Trailmakers for no money down. And if you want steel safety studs, your BFG dealer can handle that too. So get into position for winter right now. Get Trailmaker Silvertown snow tires from your BF Goodridge store or dealer. Bottom half, the seventh inning here at Fenway Park. Harry Carey and I'm Pee Wee Reese bringing you the first game of the World Series. The St. Louis Cardinals lead in this game by a score of 2-1. to one. George Scott up for the third time today. He's had two for two, a single and a double. Bob Gibson, first pitch. In there for call strike one. Curveball that's low and outside makes it count one ball and one strike. They are playing this fellow deep. Kirk Thud is way back out there in center field. And I've seen George Scott hit a few in that dead center field. There's the ball hit out to shortstop. Dal Maxwell. One hopper. Flips the ball over to Cepeda. And that's all for George Scott for the first time today. A little shortstop. Rico Petroselli is a hitter. He was a third strikeout and a seven strikeout victim of Bob Gibson. He's 0 for 2 today. Petroselli, supposed to be a good curveball hitter. There's one in there for call strike one. Has good power for our little fellow. Bob Gibson does not take too much. Another curveball. Started, checked his swing, went around, the umpire Johnny Stevens said. Gibson who is a fast pitcher. He did not take too much time between pitches. A curveball just missed. One ball and two strikes. The score here at Fenway Park, it's the Cardinals two. And the Boston Red Sox won. We're in the bottom half, the seventh inning. And it's one away. One ball and two strikes. Petroselli goes down swinging. And that is a tenth strikeout for Bob Gibson. Reggie Smith, he's 0 for 2. He struck out in the second inning and flew out to the right fielder his last time up. He has good speed. He's a little bit like Brock. He's just a young fellow. Hits a whole lot like him. He's a switch hitter. Hits the ball to all fields. Has good speed. 
curve ball. Low and outside, ball one. It's two away. A good fastball, good swing, no contact. Makes the count one ball and one strike. In Canada, Mexico, South America, more than 50 countries. Also, the Armed Forces Radio from Bangkok to Berlin, watching today's game. Over 200 million listeners, Harry. I'm glad you didn't tell me that earlier. <laughs> You'd have made me nervous, baby. <laughs> I'll never believe that. Two balls and one strike on Reggie Smith. He fouls it straight back. Makes the count two and two. Hey, we, uh... You want to see something, a study of real concentration. Watch the way Gibson comes off that mound. If I remember correctly, he falls over toward first base a little bit, doesn't he? Quite a bit. You can see he really puts everything into the pitch. Another fellow, Harry, that does that quite a bit. Uh, he then goes down with uh, either his glove hand or his bare hand to release the ball, Jim Bunny. Speaking of Jim Bunning, he had quite a year for the Philadelphia Phillies. As a high hopper, they'd better hurry, and Javier can do that. The flip, can they get him? No, sir. Reggie Smith beat him. And there was a high hopper right back over Bob Gibson's head. Javier, the second baseman, rushed in there. He had to hurry because Smith can fly. But he did not get it on the first grab. And if you miss one time with a fellow like Reggie Smith or Lou Brock, one of these fast runners, you can just stick that ball in your hip pocket. Here we have one of the few fellows with the Red Sox who's had World Series experience is coming out as a pinch hitter now, Norm Seaburn. He was born in St. Louis. Now makes his home outside Kansas City in Independence. A left-handed batter hitting for Russ Gibson with the Red Sox having the time run at first and two away in the bottom of the seventh. So Dick Williams going to his bench. It's getting late in the ball game. And with a score... Two to one in favor of the Cardinals. He's trying to get back in this game. Let's see what Seaburn did on the year. He batted 205. No home runs. Seven runs batted in. Big left-handed hitter. Fastball in there for call strike one. Reggie Smith. On at first base with two away. I doubt seriously. If Dick Williams will send Reggie Smith putting a pinch hitter up there, but you don't know. There he goes. Look out. They may get him, and I think they do. Reggie Smith is thrown out on a good throw by Tim McCarver. So that's all for the Red Sox here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. The score after seven full innings, the St. Louis Cardinals two, and the Boston Red Sox one. The 68 Chryslers are here. Move up to Chrysler. And make your move this year. The 68 Chryslers are here. With more power from a higher output 383 cubic inch V8. All the way up to a big 440. More luxury. With new options like an in-track stereo tape system. Make your move here now to Chrysler's 68. You like its brand new styling. See your local Chrysler dealer. Make your move up to Chrysler now. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Pure Jamaica ginger is the only kind of ginger that goes into Saratoga ginger ale. Why? To make a ginger ale that's different. One you can drink by itself, as well as a mixer. Take a sip, and it's mellow, gingery, without snapping at you. Even the bubbles are different. High-spirited, but long-lasting, and never overwhelming. The people who make Saratoga Bishy just can't bear to make a ginger ale like everybody else.
This is WGYWGFM Schenectady. Harry Carey and Pete Reese at Fenway Park. The Cardinals leading 2-1, to one, going to the top of the eighth inning. We have changes. Norm Siebert was the pinch hitter for Russ Gibson. When uh, Reggie Smith was out trying to steal, which ended the seventh inning, stays in the ball game, so he'll still come to bat. And since he batted for Russ Gibson, his place in the batting order will be eighth, and he'll be playing right field, which means that Ken Harrelson is leading the ball game. Sebron is now playing right field, and Harrelson is out. We have a new catcher. He'll be Elston Howard. And I think a little bit of a surprise here, Pee Wee, since he'll be the second man coming up in the eighth, unless they switch their batting order, which uh, we'll have to get that from the press box. We have John Wyatt replacing Jose Santiago. Yes, it was a little surprise, as you said. Santiago, who uh, has accounted for the only run, that the Red Sox have here. He had a home run in the bottom half of the third inning. Scheduled up to be the second hitter. He's been taken out of the game. I hope there's nothing seriously wrong with him. Uh, manager Dick Williams has uh, switched his batting order by making the multiple change. He's able to place Elston Howard ninth in the batting order. So he have Seaburn and Howard coming up. So the pitcher Wyatt actually will be in Harrelson's place in the batting order. Thank you, Harry. The first hitter to face, John Wyatt, Tim McCarver. That pitch is low and inside, ball one. We're in the top half the eighth inning. The Cardinals lead in this ball game by a score of two to one, the first game of the World Series. John Wyatt takes a little more time than San Diego did. There's a little lazy looper out in the center field. Reggie Smith comes in and takes it for out number one. So Carver is 0 for 3 on the day. San Diego won seven innings. Gave up ten hits. Two runs. He struck out five and walked three. It's one away, and that brings up Mike Shannon. Mike Shannon has two out of three, and he made a great play at third base. John Wyatt, the sidearm curveball, low and outside, ball one. Elston Howard doing the catching. I know a lot of you fans remember him. The great catcher for the New York Yankees for so many years. There's that sat on curveball. Shannon fouls it straight back. One ball and one strike on Mike Shannon. It'll be Jim Lombard. We think for the Red Sox tomorrow. And a fellow by the name of Hughes for the Cardinals. Dick Hughes and Larry Jaster is working in the Cardinal bullpen out there in right field, by the way, Pee Wee. Larry Jaster, a left-hander, doing a little throwing out in the Cardinal bullpen in case Bob Gibson gets in any trouble. A one ball and one strike pitch at too high. The Cardinals... First to score in this ball game. They scored one in the third inning. Boston tied it up right back in the third inning on a home run by Jose Santiago. And the Cardinals scored another them in the seventh inning. It'll be Jim Lombard. We think for the Red Sox tomorrow. Fellow by the name of Hughes for the Cardinals. Dick Hughes and Larry Jaster is working in the Cardinal bullpen out there in right field, by the way, Pee Wee. Larry Jaster, a left hander, doing a little throwing out in the Cardinal bullpen in case Bob Gibson gets in any trouble. A one ball and one strike pitch, it's too high. The Cardinals. 
First to score in this ball game. They scored one in the third inning. Boston tied it up right back in the third inning on a home run by Jose Santiago. And the Cardinals scored another them in the seventh inning. They lead 2-1. Two and two is a count on Mike Shannon. We're in the top half of the eighth inning. The first two games will be played here at Fenway Park. Then we'll be an off day Friday. And we'll move to good old St. Louis for three games. And more needed, we'll be right back here to Boston. The two and two pitch was foul back. Remains two and two on Mike Shannon as he walks over to get a little rosin on his hands. In the on deck circle. Javier. Javier's had two for three today. And Lou Brock. What a day he's had. Four for four. Two stolen bases. And that ties a series record. Help the many. There's a high pop-up. Yastrzemski goes over. Reggie Smith comes over. Yastrzemski takes it. Number two. Nobody has ever had five hits in one game. Why would a wonderful move by the Red Sox manager Dick Williams be way the way he's changed his batting order now? Instead of having his eighth place hitting catcher and his pitcher coming up, he's got Seaburn, Elston Howard, and Jerry Adair as his first three hitters in the bottom of the eighth. I would say he's thinking a little bit. <laughs> done all year. Javier swings on the curveball, no contact, strike one. Well, I'm sure that's the reason he sent Reggie Smith down to steal second base in the last inning. If he got thrown out, he's going to leave him in there, so he'll still be up this center. Out on curveball by John White. And that was by the way of third base. It even made me flinch a little bit up here. Owen oh 2 on Javier. The third baseman's guarding the line. In about even with the bag. Curveball outside. Boy, Pee Wee, this Wyatt is wicked on that right-handed hitter. He really wheels from the side. <laughs> yes, he does. He has a good sinker. A fastball. He caught him looking. That's all for Javier, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the top half of the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. So after seven and a half innings of play, Two, and the Boston Red Sox won. Now we're happy to present the worst person of the week. Our scouts have made their selection of worst person and giving us out of that. Give it, you know, the awful things I've done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you are a family man. Did your wife know how awful you were when you got married? Well, she got an inkling of it when I refused to say I do at three different wedding ceremonies. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> what are some of the latest dreadful things you've been doing? Going to a department store wearing a carnation looking like a floor walker. Mm -hmm. People ask me directions. I send them to the wrong floor. Despicable. I like to drive on the turnpike in weekend traffic and purposely run out of gas in the middle lane. Then I get out of the car and just shrug a lot. Oh, I've seen you. Uh, the worst thing I do is to my own family. I hide the can of right guard just when they're all getting ready for a big night out. They all share the right guard? Well, that's the beauty part of it. It's a spray, see? And they all use it. So I don't leave just one or two defenseless. I leave them all six defenseless. Yes. You certainly are the worst person of the week. Thank you. And another horrible thing I do is leave myself defenseless. I was honest. Carrie Carey and Pee Wee Reese from Fenway Park. You know, Pee Wee, that was the first time the Cardinals have been retired in order in this whole ball game in that eighth inning. And it took a new pitcher to do it, John Wyatt. Bob Gibson first pitching on. Seaver is a base hit out into center field. Kurt Flood up with the ball. Seaver making the turn at first. I imagine we'll have a pinch runner for Norm Seaver. Yes, sir, here he comes out of the dugout as Jose Cardinal. Running for Norm Seaver. As Norm Seaver hits the first pitch, a line drive and straight away center field. And you can hear these partisan fans 
here at Fenway Park. They're coming to life. And that brings up Elson Howard. Will, Dil will Dick Williams bunt to try to tie this ball game up? Only but he let Elson Howard hit away. Now let's see. Bob Gibson looks over toward the ball. He bunts the ball, foul down the first baseline. Ron Willis, a right-hander, and Joe Harner, a left-hander, are working now on the Cardinal bullpen. One strike on Elson Howard. The score, 2-1. to one. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's the Cardinals over the Red Sox here at Fenway Park. And the fans have come to life. Did he foul it? He butted the ball. The umpire said it was fair. It was butted rather high. And the car was started to go to second base of the ball. But Carnival, who has good speed, decided not to, so he had to go to first base. So Elson Howard gets a sacrifice, and that brings up Jerry Adair. Adair is 0 for 3. Struck out twice and grounded out to the third baseman his last time up. He'll be followed by Dalton Jones. Bob Gibson has 10 strikeouts. He looks to me like he has not lost any of his stuff. He looks back at the runner. There's a pitch. Kind of jammed it there with it. He fouled it off the right. Strike one. Hey, there. The last game here Sunday against the Minnesota Twins on a double play, tagging the runner between first and second. Got spiked. Had seven stitches taking his leg. Asked him about it today. He said a little sore, but he wouldn't stay out of this game for anything. Orlando Cepeda wants some sunglasses. Joel Schultz, one of the coaches for the Cardinal, brings him out. Cepeda standing out by the dugout. He's checked about three of them. Now the fans are getting on him a little bit. One strike on Jerry Adair. The tying run down at second base and Jose Tardiball. He was a pinch runner for Norm Saban, who started this inning off with a base hit. Taking a little more time. There's the ball hit out in center field. Should be no trouble for Kirk Putt. He has to come in. Tardiball is not tagging up. Back to the bag goes Tardiball. The throw goes to the shortstop of Maxwell. And it's two away. Dalton Jones. He's one for three. He got a base at his last time up. And Jones, I know that... Both of these clubs have scouted each other and scouted them each other thoroughly. They know that Dalton Jones is a pretty good hitter. Yes, and Pee Wee, this might be a very, very key moment in this ball game because if, they, if the Cardinals can retire Dalton Jones, it means that they will still hold their two to one lead. And moreover, it means that the next time they face Yastrzemski in the ninth inning, he'll be the leadoff man. And he'll be coming to bat with nobody on base. Rather than if Jones gets on, why Yastrzemski will be coming up in a spot to break him up. How true if you can keep those big hitters. Leading off, you're in a lot better shape. It's a little lazy pop-up, should be no trouble. Maxwell, the shortstop, backs up and takes it for out number three. That's all for Dalton Jones, and that's all for the Red Sox here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. The score after eight four innings, the Cardinals two, and the Boston Red Sox still one. I've done it again. Done what again? Come out without cigarettes. Well, here, try one of mine. Ah, oh, that's okay. I'm here, try one of mine. Have a Salem. Harry 
Cary of Sunway Park from going into the top of the ninth inning. The Cardinals leading 2-1. to one. Lou Brock will be coming up in the ninth inning, and he has a chance to become the first player in World Series history to get five hits in one game. But now Maxwell waiting at the plate, and here to tell you all about it is Pee Wee Reese. Okay, Harry. If San Diego loses this game, he stands to be the loser right now unless the Red Sox do something about it. The first pitch to Max was in there for call strike one. It'll be his first loss since June the 5th when he lost at Anaheim. In relief. Also his first loss at Fenway Park since April the 23rd as a curveball that's outside by John White. One ball and one strike. He was beaten 7-5 by the Yankees in relief. He was 8-1 at home during the season. That's Jose Santiago. John White on the mound now for the Red Sox as a curveball just got the outside corner. All for two for Dal Maxwell. Curveball too high. Makes the count two and two. Wyatt. Did a real good job on Javier the last time up there. He sat arm curved him twice. Got him looking for that curve ball, and he popped a fastball right down the middle. He's kind of tough to stay in there against the right hitter. There's a foul ball straight back, and the count remains two and two. Bob Gibson, the big pitcher's an next hitter. When the Cardinals lost Bob Gibson this year, it looks like they had lost the pennant. But a couple of young pitchers, by the name of Hughes and Bryles, did a terrific job for the Cardinals. There's another foul off the right. And the count remains two and two. Dal Maxwell, the first hitter for the Red Sox, for the Cardinals here in the top half of the ninth inning, with the score. Cardinals two, and the Red Sox one. They tell me this Bryles has a real fine curveball. Yes, he has, and a good live fastball, fine control, and he's very competitive, Pee Wee. The two and two pitch. Did he? No, sir. He held up. Makes a full count, three and two. The pitcher is supposed to pitch tomorrow. Dick Hughes, what does he throw? Fastball and slider. Pretty good curve. Good control. And he's not afraid, Pee Wee. That helps. Three and two pitch. Outside, John White walks the eighth place hitter. Down Maxwell. That brings up Bob Gibson. He's checking with his coach at third base, Joe Schultz. You know, this might militate against Lou Brock's uh, chance at a record-breaking five hits because if Gibson succeeds in advancing Maxwell, it would leave first base open, and the Red Sox perhaps would have a chance to pitch around Brock. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Yes, sir. Lou Brock has four for four. Let's see what Gibson does. He does sacrifice Dal Maxwell. Harry has a good point. But when you got a fellow batting in back of you but hitting 335, and Kurt Flood, Gibson squares around the front. He does make a punt down to first base by Nelson Howard. Let's it roll foul. But would have gotten the job done when Elson Howard let the ball roll foul. Gibson now coming back to the plate and back to first base, Dow Maxwell. And Pee I don't think it's necessary to remind anybody the importance of this extra run in a two to one ball game playing on the road. Yes, sir. The Red Sox. There's a bunt. Look out, George Gutton. Comes up with a kind of a semi-line drive and Scott charging in. Retired Bob Gibson. He started to flip the ball back to Jerry Adair, who was coming first base, but Maxwell, who was wide awake, was back in there in plenty of time. What Harry was talking about was the score two to one, and the Red Sox get a get someone on in the ninth inning and they can bunt 
But now they have to get two men on. Makes a big difference. Gives that pitcher a little relief, too. Well, let's see now. Blue Brock looking for a series record. He has four straight hits. No other player has ever had five. Four for four. Dow Maxwell on at first. Fastball outside. It's one away. Two runs on ten hits for the Cardinals. One run on six hits for the Red Sox. They play Lou Brock straight away. And deep. And a good ripple. No contact. One ball and one strike on Lou Brock. Down Maxwell on at first base. George Scott, the big first base, and holding close. This Cardinal Ball Club likes to run. And do. They've had quite a few opportunities today, but have not cashed in on too many of them. Curveball inside. Nelson Howard makes a Ball. Saves a wild pitch for John Wyatt. We have a new right fielder, Jose Tartable, as he went in to run for Norm Seaver the last thing. He has gone in right field. Takes the pitch, it's outside. Three balls and one strike. Right now with Kurt Flood in the on-deck circle. He is checking with his third base coach, Joel Schultz, to see if he wants him to do anything when he gets up there, which a lot of times a coach at third base will do. He will give the sign to you while you're in the on-deck circle. We're in the top half of the ninth inning. The Red Sox have only one more chance as they trail in this game by a score of two to one. Ball four, so Lou Brock does not get a chance to get his fifth inning, fifth hit in this ball game here in the top half of the ninth inning. And that brings up Kirk Flubber went away. You know, he read the Cardinals of Hand. Fifteen base runners, ten on hits, and five on walks today. Only scored two runs, and they lead two to one. Runners on first and second. Kurt Flood is a hitter. It's one away. John Wyatt takes plenty of time. Kurt Flood has a real good cut it and pals it back on the screen. Let's see what Kurt Flood has done today. He struck out. A base hit lined out to left field and grounded out to the shortstop his last time up. He's one for what? He's one for four. Batted a cool 335 on the season. Hit out into right field. Hard part of ball should come up with it. He does. Nice catch. Back to second base is Dow Maxwell. Back to first, Lou Brock. You better believe that ball was hit pretty hard. But part of was right there. The big pitcher for the Cardinals, Bob Gibson. To the ninth inning. He has pitched 35 series innings and struck out 41. That is pretty good. Roger Maris. Roger Maris has driven in both runs for the Cardinals on ground outs. It's a ball that's hit hard, but it's going foul down the first baseline. One strike on him. Way Flood was robbed on a great catch by Yastrzemski in the fifth, and he hit this ball real well too. And right center, the Tartaball grab, and you know it was his 
ground out with a naval block to advance to third base in the seventh inning when he hit behind the runner, as you pointed out, Pee Wee, that a team be able to do that. His ability to do that actually is a difference in this ball game because then Maris bounced out and the Cardinals scored a run, which by virtue of which they lead now two to one. That's very important to get that runner from second to third. And John Wyatt committed a buck. He made a move. And he didn't come on through with it. And so Maxwell goes over to third. Blue Brock down to second. One strike on Roger Maris. Talking about Flood hitting that ground ball to the first baseman to get the run over to third. There's a ball hit out into left field. Yastrzemski's. He's shading his eyes with his glove. He takes it for the third out. And that's all for Maris, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the top half of the ninth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. The score after eight and a half innings of play is still the Cardinals two and the Boston Red Sox one. you want to get home safe in this game, you sometimes have to come in on a slide, and that's baseball. Now, when you're drowning around on an icy road this winter, well, that's no time to play around. Sure-footed traction is what you need for safety. No sliding or skidding will do. And that's why we suggest D.F. Goodrich Trailmaker Silvertown Snow Tire. Trailmakers give you a solid footing, even on the slipperiest road. The wide, modern tread takes hold, gives you the traction you need in the takeoff. And the deep, biting edges take you around the turns without trouble. BFG Trailmakers are built with tough nylon cards to give you more safe driving miles. Sure, it's possible to pay less for a snow tar, but BFG's four-pile nylon construction means many winners of safe driving. Get BFG Trailmaker, Silvertown Snow Tires, for no money down and free insulation at your nearby BF Goodrich store or dealer. They're a good way to get a good start this winter. We're going into the bottom of the ninth. The Cardinals are leading 2-1, to one, and Pee Wee here's the big man, Carl Yastrzemski, who's delivered all year long in these kind of situations. Can he do it again? Well, they've set the stage for him. And as you said, he has done it so many times this year. Of course, he hasn't done it against Bob Gibson. A curveball in there for call strike one. He hasn't done too much today. Has not hit the ball hard. He's 0 for 3. out the left field. Lou Brock over in front of Kurt Flood and takes it for out number one. He had it started in the right direction, but it was not hit hard enough. So it's one up and one down, and the pinch hitter is Foy. Joe Foy. Batting for John White. That's good power. He hit 17 home runs on the year. Batting 251. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning. And the score is 2-1. to one. Inside. Ball two. <laughs> Bob Gibson on the mound for the Cardinals all the way. He has given up six hits in one run. Boyd chops down on that high fastball, fouls it back. Red Shandies walking up and down that dugout over there. Keeping a close eye on Bob Gibson. One thing you don't have to worry about too much is this big fella getting tired. As a foul off the right, the car going back, Jim, you have no chance. Count remains, two balls and two strikes. And Joe Foy, pitch hitting for John White. The next hitter will be old George Tater Scott. 
He's had himself a couple of hits today, a single and a double. He's two for three. The last chance for the Red Sox. Ball hit back through the middle, but Maxwell, the shortstop, over to cut it off. Over to Zapata, and it's two down. One more chance. Because we're in the ninth inning here at Fenway Park. Harry Carey, and I'm Pee Wee Reese. And we certainly enjoyed bringing you this first game of the World Series. Pee Wee, there's two out, nobody on base. A guy up there that could tie the game. He's got that kind of power, George Scott. And the Cardinal catcher, Tim McCarver, is taking no chances. He's going out to talk to Bob Gibson. They want to make sure that they're in accord as to what they want to do to the one man that stands between the first game victory in this World Series and perhaps a defeat. So right, Harry. Don't make a mistake now. McCarver probably told him, keep the ball down or keep it up. How are they going to pitch him? There's a fastball. It's a little high and inside. Because you remember the only run that the Boston Red Sox got back in the third inning with a two-strike, no ball count on San Diego. Bob Gibson made a bad pitch to him. He hit it in the screen. Run. The count now on George Scott. Two balls, no strikes. It's two away. We're the last half the ninth to be the last chance for the Red Sox. It's too low. Ball three. The next hitter, Rico Petroselli. Petroselli, I would say he's due. He struck out the second, the fourth, and the seventh. In there for call strike one, as George Scott was taking all the way. But I don't believe he'll be taking this time if this fastball's in there to his liking. Adam half the ninth inning. Good swing, no contact for George Scott. Curveball, I think he was looking for that fastball. Yes, and Pee Wee, that might have been the best breaking ball he's thrown all day. He really, he really snapped it off. Two to one. They were the Cardinals. Bottom half the ninth inning. The last chance right here for the Red Sox. Did he? No, sir. He didn't go around. But George Scott gets the base on ball. And Pee Wee, that's the first pass that Gibson has made. That's the first walk he has issued. That's only the sixth man to reach base for the Red Sox, but they're in a spot where they could win the ball game with a long one. Red Shandies has gone out to talk to Bob Gibson. Orlando Cepeda comes out. The entire infield has converged. And I believe they have a rule in World Series limiting the number of men who can talk to the pitcher. So shortstop down Knoxville, manager Red Shandies, and Tim McCarver, along with Bob Gibson, are talking things over. We're going to have a pinch hitter here for the Red Sox. Yep, we certainly are, Harry, and I'll say one thing for Williams. Petroselli, who can hit the long ball, he struck out three times a day, Dick Williams knows this, so he's putting in Mike Andrews. Let's see what we have on Mike Andrews. He batted 263 for the year, eight home runs, 40 runs batted in. So Mike Andrews is the last hope now. Boston Red Sox. Here's a fine young ball player. He's a second baseman. He should be around a long time. Chokes up on the bat. Bob Gibson first pitches low and inside. Remember, fans, it's two to one. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Cardinals on top. It's two away. It's popped up. It should be all over with. Roger Maris, the right fielder, going over underneath it and pitch it for out number three. So that's all for Mike Andrews, and that's all for the Boston Red Sox here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. And the final score here at Fenway Park, the St. Louis Cardinals, two runs, ten hits, no errors. Boston Red Sox, one run on six hits and no errors. Now, St. Louis won... Boston one.